I'm Jonathan Prosperi here with Frontier Community Access Television. And this morning, I'm here with the superintendent of the Frontier Regional School District, Martha Barrett. Superintendent Barrett, thank you for coming with us this morning. Thank you, John, for having me. I appreciate it very much. Our pleasure. So this morning, we're here to talk about the Frontier budget for the fiscal year 2016. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the starting point for the budget and uh, what got you launched on what you wanted to consider for, your, for this year's budget? OK. You know, the budget process really begins when last year's budget is voted. Mm -hmm. Because once we have last year's budget, we're already starting to think, what do we need to do for next year? What we, weren't we able to accomplish for the previous year's budget? And what do we need to accomplish in the next year's budget? So we were already looking at things like enrollment, technology, special ed, preschool funding. Mm -hmm. These were all considerations we were talking about and thinking about last summer. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the goals that you had with figuring out this year's budget, things that you wanted to do differently or mm -hmm. better than in 2015? Okay, um, one of the things that we really have tried to emphasize is technology. You know, when our schools were all renovated uh, 18 to 20 years ago, our technology was state of the art. Mm -hmm. And it's expensive and it becomes obsolete very quickly. Mm -hmm. So we really haven't kept pace with where we wanted to be. Um, we have a wonderful tech team right now who has developed a plan um, of where we need to be as far as uniform platforms and our software and hardware. So we really have looked at how do we go out and purchase new technology or do we purchase it and go to more of a lease, which is really what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. And we've also been exper experimenting with different personal device items. We didn't want to go all with Chromebooks, all with iPads. Um, so we've been doing a combination. So one of the big issues this year was to change our platform form from Novell over to Google. Uh -huh. And really that has taken the entire year. But in order to do that, you have to have trained staff. So one of the areas that we knew we were short in was integrating the technology once we had everything in place into the classrooms. So a push in this year's budget in the 2016 budget was to get a position in place for an educational integration technologist. So we have been able to to have a point eight position put in. And so this person's job is essentially to go into the classroom, work with the teacher mm -hmm. and the students and help that technology become an applied part of the lessons. So it's not a standalone that it really becomes part of the everyday lesson. Mm -hmm. um, it's one person you know, for four schools, mm -hmm. but I think it's a, a substantial start. Mm -hmm. And so in, as far as the budget is concerned, when you say technology, this means that you're getting devices into mm -hmm. the schools and you're getting new programs that, that everyone's using. So like, what is a specific thing? Are we talking, you, you mentioned iPads mm -hmm. and Chromebooks. So is this technology that all the students are gonna be using with their um, classes? Yeah, what we've tried to do is to bring devices like within specific, um, grades, so mm -hmm. in the middle school. Um, we've had what they call the cow cart, the computers on, on okay. wheels. Yeah. Um, we have that in Deerfield, we have it in Frontier. Mm -hmm. But was that getting the usage you know, that we needed to? Mm -hmm. um, we started investigating Chromebooks because it's, it's less expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and they do have some pretty good lease programs. So that's one of the areas that we were looking at with the budget was technology. Mm -hmm. um, another area that we're always very concerned about and always investigating as mm -hmm. our special ed. We've prided ourselves on having a variety of special ed programs within the district because our philosophy is to try to educate as many of our students within one of the four towns mm -hmm. uh, as possible so that we send fewer and fewer out of district. So we're constantly looking and reevaluating our programs, our staffing um, to ensure that we're able to uh, to provide the best education for all of our kids, regardless of their abilities. Excellent. So, all right. So, those are so that's a great place to start with figuring out some of our considerations. Mm -hmm. So, building on that to get to kind of where we are with the budget, what were some of the long-term plans that you were starting mm -hmm. to figure out as you were coming into the 2016 budget year? One of the things that we have also been keeping an eye on are the preschool population. Mm -hmm. um, we are seeing. And we don't know if it's a, 
a one-year kind of blip on the radar yeah. or if it's a longer pattern. But we are seeing children in our three and four-year-old population um, with some different needs than we've seen in the past that may not be coming into the schools with the same basic skills that we've seen children in the past. Interesting. So one area that we are working on is increasing our preschool programs to full day programs mm -hmm. in Deerfield for next year. So we have always had one full day program and two half day programs and we really have looked at the needs of the kids and so we're going to be increasing to three full day programs for next year. And so that's going to be a fairly significant increase in, in what the school is going to require as far as teachers and staff and other it, facilities. It will, um, we've been able to actually do some shifting mm -hmm. in population of, of teachers and who's doing what. So it won't be a significant budget increase. Um, we have increased our early childhood director from a point six to a point eight in order to address... Is that more, I'm sorry, is that more time? It's I'm, more time, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. A full-time FTE or full-time equivalent is a mm -hmm. 1.0. Okay. So a point six is three days a week and okay. a point eight is four days a week. This is not an increase in her salary. This is a shifting of dollars that we used in the consulting line item okay. to um, kind of the director line So item. it's a reallocation of right. the funds to help right. with those. So what other sorts of long-term plans do you have with the schools or with the buildings? The buildings, because of their age, um, we are really looking at what we're going to be funding for capital improvements. Mm -hmm. One of the areas of concern is the roof mm -hmm. on Deerfield Elementary. So we have applied for um, Massachusetts uh, School Building Authority mm -hmm. grant. Um, we have a site visit on April 15th. That is going to be a fairly substantial project. Determining factor. Yeah. yeah. And um, so I'm glad that they're coming out to take a look at it, mm -hmm. but it is going to be a large project. Probably not for this summer, but we're hoping for next summer. Okay. So that's going to be something that's planning. So now um, we've talked about some of your goals. We've talked about some of the plans that you have, some of the things that you've looked at. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of the realities that come in when you're trying to figure out a budget with all of these moving parts and all of these different mm -hmm. considerations. What are some of the things that you've had to navigate around uh, when determining right. this year's budget? You know, there are a lot of factors. Um, and so the, the budget is always a moving target. Mm -hmm. We looked at our uh, population which is slowly reducing over time. Mm -hmm. um, we have seen our, our overall district population drop by about 150, 200 kids in the last 10 to 12 Out years. Out of 700. Right? Uh, well, the high school is went from 726 to 600, but I'm talking district-wide. Okay. And um, so now our overall population is about 1,500 students whereas before it was close to 1,700. Okay. Now, it, it is not a dramatic decrease. Um, we're talking, you know, 10 each year, perhaps from the high school, and four or five each year but from But I mean, 100, 150 over that amount of time is a pretty noticeable, it the is. teachers certainly must notice it. It, it is, and, and so that's a consideration because it's a smaller number. Mm -hmm. um, how do we address that? Mm -hmm. And how do we address it on the elementary level is different than how we address it on the high school level. So one of the things that the principal at the high school has done for next year is he has devised a plan that will allow high school teachers to go and pick up classes in the middle school. So it's more flexibility mm -hmm. uh, in that um, we can you know, work on getting more evenly sized classes um, but it also remain, means that you have reduced state funding when your population starts to shrink. So that's a consideration, and we already have reduced state funding mm -hmm. because the state's reimbursement level under the Chapter 70 funds has been slowly declining over and I've the heard, years. And I've heard people talking at the school meetings mm -hmm. and other things that it's been slowly declining over a long period. Mm -hmm. To at this point, it seems like it's been a significant reduction where things members of the town are saying that the that the assessments to the towns have gone up as significant in relation to the total budget. And that's true. And so the burden has really come back to the taxpayers. Um, mm -hmm. Our taxpayers have been very generous in the past. They value education, but I also know they're getting squeezed, mm -hmm. you know, as well. So that is also a consideration when you're developing the budget. Mm -hmm. You can't always, especially with the declining enrollment, ask for more and more. Mm -hmm. um, 
there's only so many dollars that can be stretched. Mm -hmm. All right. So now let's talk about the bottom line. Mm -hmm. We've figured out, you know, we've talked through the whole process. Let's see, what is, what is the raw number? What is Frontier's total bill, let's call it, for the services rendered? Mm -hmm. what, is, what is the assessment to the four towns going to be? The total budget for all five schools is 19.7 million. That's quite a sum. Right. And, and that does not include any of the grants. That is the mm -hmm. total burden that's on the taxpayers. So aside from what the state kicks in and from what you get from grants and other sources, this is going to be the what is divided. The to the town, yes, yes. All right, with a $19 million bill, do you think that the townspeople will be interested in taking a, a higher assessment versus a lower assessment? Mm -hmm. Well, we are hoping, we tried to be very reasonable mm -hmm. in our assessments. Um, the Deerfield Elementary School is 2.5, and I believe that's the highest um, mm -hmm. increase. And we, we did try to keep, keep the funding as low as possible and also maintain the quality in the programs that we have. Um, I put forth a 0% a increase for the Frontier Regional mm -hmm. School budget. Uh, the school committee did vote a slightly higher figure. Um, and that will be determined by the uh, townspeople. Mm -hmm. But you know, please be aware that, that we were very conscious of maintaining the balance of our programs and not bleeding the towns mm -hmm. at the same time. Okay. So before we go, is there anything else that you're interested in saying? Is there any other thoughts that you have about this year's budget that you think are relevant to the townspeople? Um, basically, please come uh, to your town meetings. The first one is Friday, April 24th in Sunderland, um, and then that's followed by Deerfield and Waitley, and then finally Conway in May. Mm -hmm. um, I think participation in the budget process um, is important, and we've always appreciated the taxpayers' support in the past, and uh, we hope to continue to win um, their trust and in, in the future. Uh, I just want to say thank you for coming out and for discussing it with us and for making this information so available. It's something that's so important, something that's so critical to how we operate in these towns. Uh, and so just thank you for coming out. Thank you. Thank you for having me and giving me this opportunity. And it's, it's been a pleasure. Thanks.